boys and girls, brothers and sisters in the Dharma, youth members, and all who are watching this presentation. Now, we are going to have a presentation titled Dharma Youth Camps of PBHP Reflections. Now, we are going to have a PowerPoint and that PowerPoint is pertaining to the previous Dharma Youth Camps of PBHP. We are going to do some important reflections pertaining to the Dharma. And the presentation has the text in English and very important reflections in Chinese also. Now, the objective of this presentation is to remind all previous Dharma Youth Camp participants about the importance of Dharma. Many have actually more or less let go and gone into the worldly things completely and not in touch with Dharma, the greatest gift right, anymore. So it's quite sad in that respect because the Dharma is the greatest gift. So we are going to do reflections and see the Dharma of each of the camps that run from the first camp, 1993, until 18 Dharma Youth Camp. Now, we have actually more than 25 youth camps already since the start. But then because of you know time constraint, we only do the first 18 for our Dharma reflection. Right? So now, before we launch the PowerPoint, uh, let me check the setup. Ah, it's okay, the setup. And now we will launch the PowerPoint. Ah, you can see the cover slide, very meaningful one. And the cover slide, of course, shows the BBHP three big buildings. And most of the camps actually were held right, in BBHP premises, except for the first few where BBHP did not have its own premises. So we had to do it in the Sunmin Independent School. right? But then later on, I think it was from 1995 onwards, then we could have the camps in the PBHP building. Firstly, it was in the Mahabodhi building, the oldest one, and then later on to the biggest one, which is the Damachaka building. Now, you can see just some, you know, uh, photo shots, right, of some of the events in the previous camps, uh, one of the camps, uh, you see the participants going to the famous landmark of the Lointan, right, the clock tower. Uh. So now let us move on to the slides. Now, so this is the first slide. Now we go on to the second slide. Now the second slide explains a bit about the presentation. As I said just now, the presentation is titled PBHP Dharma Youth Camps Reflections, right? And we are going to comment on the themes from the 1st to the 18th. Now, each Dharma Youth Camp has actually a theme based on the Dharma. Lah. And also, it has a theme song composed, right? Except the first one where they use the anthem of unity. Other than that, from second onwards, all the theme songs were actually original compositions by our PBHP members, uh, adults, as well as students. And they contain very good lyrics of Dharma where we can actually reflect. You can actually listen to the selected ones you can pick by just clicking on the links, you know. There is a playlist I have put in the YouTube and you just have to check 
the PVHP DYC uh, songs, uh, and then you can make your selection. Uh, so many of them we have put up there. Or you can go directly to the section where you can see all the Dharma Youth Camp songs are listed. Lah. So this is the introduction. Right? The most important, of course, is the reflection lah, on the team. Uh, just to remind our participants not to let go of the Dharma they have learned and still be with the Dharma so that they don't belong to the category of from light to darkness. The Buddha talked about that. Four groups of people. People who go from darkness to darkness. That means they, they don't join any of the Dharma-based activities. Uh. They will do all the you know, things which are not in line with the Dharma. They come into the world also without the Dharma. There's a worse category, like darkness to darkness. Uh. Uh, doing all the unwholesome things all throughout uh, so far. Then you have the second one, darkness to light. They come very, very difficult situations, but then they meet the Dhamma, right? And then, you know, from there, they proceed well. Uh. Then you have the third one, which is happening uh, <laughs> very often, uh, we see around, from light to darkness. They start off very well, you know, Buddhist Sunday school, and then Dhamma youth camps, and so on, and practice for some time. Then after that, they get caught up in the worldly things already. Right, their career, their families, all these are important also. But what I mean is very sad that they completely let go of the Dharma. They don't get involved anymore. They don't learn and don't reflect any more, you know, on the Dharma. Are that according to what we see in the scripture is light to darkness. So that is quite sad. Of course, the best one is light to light. People who start off very well with the, you know. Uh, good conditions also, and then Sunday school, Lama you can, and then still continue. And now some, many of them are committee members now, the top positions in PBHP, uh, that is light to lightness. So sadhu to this best category of people. Uh. Now let us go on, right, with the next slide, which is slide number three now. Now, slide number three is on the first Dharma you can with the team. Good heart, clear mind. A very important thing, isn't it? Uh, so in the camp, of course, they learn a lot of uh, very important Dharma. But sad to say, I think only a very, very small percentage of the participants uh, who are still really on the Dharma part. They are so busy with other worldly things, so we completely forget about the Dharma already. That is quite sad. Lah. So actually, we should always reflect. Now on the team, for example, we can reflect. Have I become more and more kind-hearted? Has my mind grown in calmness and clarity? Or for all people, uh, even those uh, who are who were not the participants, we can always reflect. Uh, have we become more and more kind-hearted? All right. Uh, have our minds grown in calmness and clarity? Now, being kind-hearted, uh, that is metta, uh, is very important dharma practice. And you see, if you practice this on and on metta, then uh, you get 11 benefits and the dharma will be with you. Uh. And then also, training the mind, you know. Mind development is an important aspect of the dharma practice to be more steady and calm, to be able to see things more clearly with the understanding of the Dharma and wisdom growing, then you will be able to cope with the problems or trouble or in the world today. But today you see so many get stressed, right? Uh, but those that have good Dharma understanding and some realization will be able to cope better. But today you find depression and other stress-related things of, but are on many aspects of life. Lah. Increasing, isn't it? Suicide increasing, all right? depression increasing, especially among the young. So I just want to reflect, just think back, 1993, that the first camp, right? Some of them, them, of course, have children already, also grown-up children already. Imagine how many years. Lah. So are they still with the Dharma? Have they taught their children the Dharma, right? Uh, because we are heading for very challenging times. You know? So that is this 
first dharma you can for reflection. You can see you know, those uh, pictures uh, pertaining to the selected pictures of the first dharma you can, uh, right? And that time there in Samin Tu Chong, I put down also the leaders and uh, the, the monk was Reverend uh, Sampano, uh, as you have recall. Uh, so it's very, very nostalgic uh, down memory lane. But important is to remind ourselves, uh, are we still with the Dharma? Uh, now let us go on to the next one, which is slide number four. Yeah, slide number four is on the second DYC already. Still at the Saming Tuchong. And the team, uh, very meaningful team, reaching out, looking in. Now you see there are two aspects. One is reaching out. Reaching out would be the dana, charity, helping people, service. And the other one is looking in. It is the development of the mind and the character when we practice watching the mind, developing the mind and character. Uh, that is the internal, internal thing. Uh. Uh, so these two aspects are very important. Uh. Uh, that means we need to serve people also to help as well as to cultivate our mind. Otherwise, you get burned out. So those in the second Dharma, you can if you are uh, watching, ask yourself, uh, have I been reaching out to others? Last time, uh, of course, these people did dana. There were projects uh, to tell about the importance of charity and dana. And then also we introduced some simple meditation. So now, after so many years have passed already, how many still at it? How many still practice the dharma? Like, for example, listening to the good dharma presentations and talks. Now you have YouTube, you know. Lots of things. Huh? And then, are you still practicing Metta Bawana? So these are the things we have to reflect and ask. Because one day, right, you might realize uh, that, yeah, I wasted my time and completely let go of the treasure of the Dharma. Uh, it's only in moments of crisis and trouble uh, right, that uh, you have memories uh, coming back again. Uh, right? So we don't want that to happen. So this group of people have also become uh, parents already, many of them. So, have we inculcated these good values of the Dhamma to the children, to the young ones? Uh, this is what we have to uh, reflect also. Now, that is slide number four. Now, let us go to slide number five now. Ah, this is slide number four. Uh, sorry, number five. Slide number five, but now we are at the third Dhamma you can. Ah, the third Dhamma you can. As I said now, already now in the PBHP building already. Uh, that is a Mahabodhi building. Uh, and you will see the Mahabodhi hall also. And that time, you know, <laughs> the camp leader, uh, now also a very senior teacher already, uh, Sister of Peking. And the team was very, very meaningful to walk the Dharma way. So in that camp, we uh, taught, uh, we have Dharma talks, Dharma discussion, uh, even um, talent nights uh, to try to teach the Dharma. But the interesting thing is, how many still are walking the Dharma way? You see? Uh, so that is what we need to reflect. And actually, it's not only for the DYC participants, it's for everybody actually, right? Are we walking the Dhamma way? We also have to ask the adults, the old people also. Uh, so this is relevant for all people. So we have to reflect, have I reduced my greed, hatred, and delusion? Very important, isn't it? The practice involves cutting the three mental poisons of greed, hatred, and delusion that will bring us to loss of dukkha, suffering, not only in this life, but also in future lives where we get reborn into suffering states. Uh, the woeful states, which are the health state, the animal state, or the hungry ghost state. So we have to always check, right? And then you see you know, the most important Dharma way, of course, is to practice the Noble Eightfold Path. Now, I have given presentations on Noble Eightfold Path before, so we don't have time to go over this. 
So we have to ask ourselves, how well are we practicing the Noble Eightfold Path? Which can be summarized as Jiat Ting Hui. To observe the morality, to train the mind to have stillness, to have concentration, and then to learn, reflect, discuss, and meditate so that our wisdom can grow. So we have asked, we have asked ourselves, are we still doing this? Even though we are very, very busy? Because in the end, this is what matters. All other things, all the wealth, the possessions, the houses, the cars, all this you have to leave behind. So what you take with you will be the intangible things, the Dharma. Your understanding and seeing the Dharma. right? And the good things that you have done. These are the things that follow you. I've done presentation on this also, what really matters. So this is the reflection you have to do. I don't know how many are watching this, very few, I think. Huh? But those that happen to watch this, it will be good and you are doing a good thing. If you can forward to your friends, maybe those in the Dharma, you can before. And you are really sharing the Dharma. And that is a good thing, right? So this is the third Dharma you can, slide number five. Now we go on to slide number six. Oh, now he has gone to number seven. So we have got to go number six now. Uh, this is number six. So just now we were at the third Dharma you can with the team walk the Dharma way. Now we go to the fourth Dharma you can, a very memorable one also. And the theme was mind matters, love conquers. Now, when we reflect on the theme, we find there are two important aspects, right? When we walk the Dharma way, when we practice, one is to take care of the mind to make sure that the mind is growing growing in compassion, growing in wisdom, growing in peace and happiness. And of course, for that, we need to practice, isn't it? And most important, and we come back to uh, practicing the Noble Eightfold Path. Lah. So that is what we have to ask ourselves. And the other aspect, love conquers, and that is the power of metta and compassion. So have we really practice the metta and our compassion and kindness growing, reaching out to people. Ah, this will be the good qualities uh, that will be embedded in your mind. That will be your true wealth. The compassion, love and wisdom that you cultivate will be your true wealth that will lead you from life to life until you get enlightened and become the Buddha. So we have always have to reflect, and this also applies to all Dhamma practitioners. How much have we grown in the wisdom through the various proper methods I've told you? Huh? Well, learning the Dhamma through reading, through listening and reflecting, and then also to contemplate, and also maybe to have discussion and to have meditation to grow in wisdom. And how much have we grown in compassion? Have we been doing enough dana and charity to evoke the Brahma Vihara of Karuna, which is compassion? Actually, wisdom and compassion go together, right? Uh, because compassion must have wisdom. And once you have wisdom already, then your heart opens up. Uh, then you know one important aspect is to reach out to people in need. To open the heart, you cannot be selfish, isn't it? The Buddha himself, you see, he served the sick. And then also with his wisdom, he preached uh, to so many people. And because of his teachings today, we still have the Dhamma, we still have the Dhamma, you can. So you see, it's uh, so important, these two things. So now, so many get caught in this mundane world. Uh, you have to uh, earn more money, la, uh, to have more wealth. Well, that is quite understandable, but there's a limit. And we have to check ourselves. Are we still with the Dharma? Or are we go growing, uh, or going uh, from light to darkness? Uh, darkness uh, does not mean that uh, you are very poor and uh, you know you have a little wealth. All this not that. The darkness, as I say, is uh, you have completely said goodbye to Dharma. 
there's no cultivation in the mind uh, for the good sublime qualities uh, to see the Dhamma, to see the things as they truly are, you see. So that is a very important thing, an important aspect. Now, if for each of the DYC that particular year, we have the theme. And later on, if you are interested, you can uh, actually view or follow. Uh, the, uh, you go into the PowerPoint, uh, you can actually download the PowerPoint and then click on the playlist on the YouTube, you'll find all the various theme songs. And for each theme, the lyrics are written pertaining to the theme. So there's a lot of Dharma we can learn. So it's applicable actually not only to DYC participants, no, but to all you know, uh, who want to follow the Dharma way, uh, so-called Buddhist. Lah. Uh, so this is the important aspect that you have to really think clearly. Uh, so now, let us go on to the next one. Ah, just now was the fourth one. So now we have the seventh slide already. And the seventh slide is the fifth DYC, 1997. And also now held in the PBHP already with this theme of living virtuously, acting mindfully. And of course, if you go into the theme song with the lyrics, there's a lot of Dharma written about that. And we have to ask ourselves, you know, have we been following the precepts? The first aspect is sila, living mind uh, virtuously. As Buddhists, we need to follow, uh, uh, lay Buddhists uh, to follow at least the five precepts. And then uh, in our lives, very important aspect is the practice of mindfulness. So in what we do through the speech and through the body, which means what we speak and what we do, do we have mindfulness and check, watch the mind before we speak or before we do, that we have good mindfulness, heedfulness, so that we do not speak the unwholesome things that have bad karma or do the unwholesome things that generate bad karma. So that's why the second aspect of the team is important to train to act mindfully. And of course, in this camp, we have talks, you know, uh, even the talk on the team uh, in the opening night, uh, also on these important aspects. Uh. So we have to always ask ourselves, have we been keeping well the five precepts? Have we been more mindful and heedful? How good is our practice of the Dharma? Ah, so we have to ask ourselves such questions. Now, let us uh, now go on to the next one. Now, we are now at the, uh, the eighth slide, huh? which is the sixth Dharma you can. Just now, uh, we were at the Ah, uh, just now we had the fifth, isn't it? Uh, so now we had the sixth. You can check if you want to uh, refresh your memory. Ah, uh, just now was the fifth, uh, remember? Living virtuously, acting mindfully. And of course, these uh, participants are all now very grown up already. They have their children and so on already, uh, isn't it? Uh, so now let us go on to the, the sixth one, which is 1998. And this was the year where the participants for one of the activities went to the, uh, the clock tower area. Lah, uh, so you can see the photo. And actually, many of the leaders were really outstanding, uh, very smart, brilliant, and so on. Right? But we have to always know that finally, what matters is the Dhamma. So they have to balance their lives. So if they have the wisdom, so they will be going to light, you see, always in the light, you see. The ordinary life we still have to lead because we are not you know, monks or nuns. Or, but what we are contending is, uh, are they still with the Dharma, you see? Now, do they practice still regularly and introduce to their children and so on? Uh? Because uh, usually in the columns we feel, uh, religion, we put Buddhists, uh, 
Uh, but of course, if you have converted, then it's okay. Then you put the other religions and practice your religions well. Isn't it? But they have gone through these Dhamma U camps and some with the Sunday school and so on. So it's quite sad uh, if they are moving to darkness in the sense that uh, completely letting go the Dhamma. But there are people uh, in the camps uh, who are doing very well now. Very small, small percentage. Uh, probably less than even 5% of the people who are still very, very good in practicing the Dhamma and also helping to be Dhamma Dutta workers. That means spreading the Dhamma to serve the Dhamma cause. Uh, that is a very meritorious thing. So this theme for the six Dhamma you can was right vision, good action. Now, right vision, you know, sometimes also written as right understanding, right view. And then good action, of course, will pertain to the morality partner. So we need to reflect and ask ourselves, do we develop right view through Dharma practice? The first of the Noble Eightfold Paths, as you know, is Sama Diti, which is right view or right understanding. So have we taken the steps uh, to really understand this very important factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. As uh, in the scriptures, uh, emphasize so much that we must have the right view. And today you find many people have wrong views, delusion. And there is a lot of dukkha coming with the delusion, right? People with the wrong view of things, do unwholesome things, and they involve in, uh, you know, Corruption, uh, uh, not being honest, uh, violence, aggression, uh, all sorts of things because no right view. And the noble right view uh, is the understanding of the four noble truths. Uh. I've also done presentation on that. So you need to go over this and reflect, spend some time, right? No matter how busy we are, because that is what matters ultimately. And things are so uncertain, especially now you have so much of uh, trouble, huh? uh, COVID-19, uh, climate upheavals, uh, natural disasters, uh, wars, uh, lots of things uh, you know, that have much to come. So when we reflect on this, we say, yeah, things are so uncertain, anything can happen and it's impermanent. So I must make sure I have some time for my religion also, you know, the spiritual part. Then, of course, you are... Uh, Lay person, you need also to earn your money and so on. So this is a balanced life. But sad to say, uh, mostly uh, uh, drop the spiritual part more or less completely. You ask yourself, oh, how many uh, are still practicing and teaching their children or practicing together? Uh, Metta Bawana, all this, very, very few. Uh, uh, so we have to ask ourselves these reflective questions. Do we carry out the 10 wholesome actions? I've also given talks on that already, uh, presentation. What are the 10 things that we must not do? What are the 10 wholesome things? You can check the YouTube or the PowerPoint. All the things are there. Uh, I mean, important wholesome actions, you know, uh, you must do dana. You have to observe your precepts. You have to meditate, right? Uh, reach out to other people, serve, and all those things. The wholesome things uh, that generate good karma. Uh, so, of course, during the camp, it was memorable that they, apart from uh, learning Dharma, they also have good fellowship, enjoy themselves in a proper way. But after that, uh, sad to say, uh, for most cases, uh, it's bye-bye. Really. Uh, the camp ends and the Dharma also ends for them already. So, there's uh, something quite sad in that sense. Uh, right? So, maybe uh, we need to reflect very seriously and then uh, continue with the Dharma. Uh, so now let us go on to the next one. Now this is now slide number eight. Uh. So slide number eight is the sixth Dharma you can. So now we have to move to the seventh Dharma you can now. Ah, this is the seven Dharma you camp, 1999. And you can see the group photo taken just across the first building. At the time, we had just this building, only one building, but it was held there. And the camp had the theme, 
Buddha my guide, Dhamma my light. So we had a lot of discussion and then Dhamma talks and so on uh, to address this theme. Why the Buddha is the greatest guide? That the Buddha, perfect enlightened being. So if we take refuge in the Dhamma, we must follow uh, or try to email, uh, you know, take him as the ideal, uh, the qualities that he has, we have to try to practice. And then the most important of the three refuges is the Dhamma. That's why the Buddha said, he who sees the Dhamma sees me. He who sees me sees the Dhamma. So now, uh, he's still learning, understanding, reflecting and practicing the Dhamma or not? And has the Dhamma been your light uh, to reveal more and more truthful things to you? Of course, uh, you don't expect things to happen overnight. But if you are on the right path and learning the proper Dhamma, then there should be a progress uh, in your morality, in your dana, in your wisdom. Your mind is getting better gradually. Uh, then later on, uh, when you get old, you look back and then you say, oh, I have actually spent my life in a constructive, worthy way. I have balanced my life only. So that is what we have to reflect now. And we don't wait until it's too late already. Uh, <laughs> we get caught in a terrible calamity or, you know, a very terrible tragedy or some unfortunate thing. Then you want to practice and it becomes too late, especially when people become very, very sick already. Uh, I know even among the young people, uh, we have done, I've done big services for some that even can participants and leaders uh, have passed away also through accidents, uh, through sicknesses, all sorts of things, you see. So nothing is really certain. So therefore, we have to reflect and ask ourselves, have we taken refuge in the Buddha? To take the Buddha as the ideal, right? To practice in accordance with his qualities, the nine virtues of the Buddha. And then the other very important thing is, have we followed his teachings? Are we living by the principles of Dharma? We always have to reflect and check and then go on uh, in the Dharma. That means you're always on the way to light. Uh, so you can see all these, of course, uh, maybe will bring good memories to the participants and you know, can show their children. Uh, this is a good education, but today, unfortunately, it's mostly all on secular education, hardly anything on good spiritual education. Uh, they will teach the children how to get A's uh, uh, for tuition, uh, all sorts of things. Well, of course, you need to do that. But sad to say, very few uh, are, are receiving a good spiritual education in whatever religion, a proper religion. And for Buddhists, it's the Dharma way. So that's why today you hear of you know, uh, young people in their late 20s or 30s, uh, so many having problems of the mind. There have been cases that uh, you know, commit suicide also. I think I need not tell you all these things. You can uh, find out for yourself. Uh. So you have to address the problems now. You cannot wait, isn't it? Uh, so that is slide number nine, which is on the seven Dharma Youth Camp. So now, let us now go on to number uh, 10. The slide number 10. That is the eight Dhamma you can really. Right? Now, the eight Dhamma you can has the theme walk the path with heart. Well, that's again no? a very important thing, isn't it? That we have to walk the path. And what is the path? The path is the noble eightfold path. And you have to walk it with heart, with passion, with interest, right? Enthusiasm, sincerity. And apart from that, also must have the diligence and the mindfulness when you are practicing the Noble Eightfold Path. So these are the things that we have to reflect on. So we ask ourselves, have we been practicing Dharma conscientiously? Have we made the Dharma known to others? Because the gift of Dharma is the greatest gift. So if we are able to share the Dhamma with other people, then you are doing a very meritorious thing of the, the gift of Dhamma. So the greatest Dhamma is the 
dana or dharma. Intangible. Uh, uh, of course, the other things are important. Uh, helping with food, with uh, cash donation, uh, blood donation. All those are also important. But it's in the scripture saying that the, the gift of dharma. Because this gift of this dharma, when the person learns it, understands it, practices it, and gets the benefits. Uh, not only in this life, you know, it will follow you life to life you have got. Whereas other charity things, uh, right, they will come to uh, end. Uh, you know, you give the food, the food will finish, then the money also. Of course, they need that. Uh, but then uh, you cannot compare with the gift of Dhamma. So we have to reflect on this very, very mindfully, carefully, that we must always walk the path with heart. So you find each camera, those days, uh, uh, now also quite okay. We have many, many participants. Uh, but uh, probably uh, a very, very small percentage who still are walking the path with heart. There are, but very, very few, wherever they are. Uh, now these maybe uh, these students uh, some of them have grown up, they have uh, good careers already, doctors, uh, lawyers, uh, engineers, all sorts of professional people we have already from the DYC all over the world. Uh, but the crucial question we have to ask, how many are still with the Dharma, practicing well, and also trying to spread the Dharma uh, to the others for their benefits and so on? And that is the question we have to ask. So this is what you need to do for the reflection. Now let us go on to slide number 11. And slide number 11, uh, pertains to the nine Dharma you can already. Ah. Ah, so this is the da nine Dharma you can uh, with a very interesting theme. I remember this theme because this was one of the few song lyrics I wrote. Uh, because <laughs> there were not people for that year. There weren't people for that year who wanted to write. So I wrote the theme song for this year. Minding my monkey mind. Of course, I coined this uh, theme and I did a write up on the meaning. Uh, you can get it in the, uh, the camp booklets, uh, which also in the anniversary magazine, also available in the internet. I have already posted in my slide share. You can download the book or read it if you have not. And not only to read once only, uh, I've been reading all these many, many times to reflect on the Dhamma, right? So, this thing of the monkey mind is a very serious matter today. Especially among young people, the children, uh, so very restless, impatient, very short-tempered, easily irritated. All those qualities, you know, like the monkey mind. So have we taken steps to solve that problem? So we have to ask ourselves, and this applies to all the practicing Buddhists, have we... Have we been training our mind or not? Yeah. To train the mind, for example, uh, in uh, meditation, uh, in listening patiently, all those things that we have talked many times. And then uh, you can watch, you see, has our mind become more calm, patient, compassionate, and wise? Uh, these are the good qualities uh, that need to be developed. But today, among the young people, I've taught for you no know, 20 over years, more than 25 years in the Sunday school. And then also more than, I think about five years in the preschool. Young, young uh, children, three, four years old. So I can see, you know, the, the trend now is in society today. They're becoming more restless, impatient, uh, and then also very easily agitated. And... Wisdom is lacking. Uh, they cannot be patient and uh, kind. Uh. And this is actually uh, caused by many factors. Uh. Society is like that. That's why you hear of uh, wow, violence by the young people, uh, protests, uh, damage public property, and so on. Uh. It just doesn't happen like this. You know. It comes from the young station. You know. So we have definitely got to reflect on this and take steps uh, to train the mind to develop the qualities of calmness, patience, compassion, and wisdom. And of course, the best way is still, as I've said many times, the noble input part. But then you have uh, many other supportive things that uh, you can also learn. I've uh, posted Jataka stories and uh, other moral stories. Hopefully, hopefully that the parents uh, can guide the children uh, to develop these qualities, inculcate. 
but many are caught up in just this game of getting more A's, uh, tuition and so on. That is one aspect of life, but they forget the more important thing. Right? So not balanced. Uh, I see this, I find, uh, you see, uh, at that stage, uh, we try to uh, show them, you know, the rumah kana chat homes uh, and so on, uh, uh, to let them see all those things. So that period of time, wow, very, very good. But once they go out into the world, they got they get caught by Mara forces, right? To become more greedy and to earn more and more money and no end, right? I'm not saying that it's wrong to earn money. What I'm saying is, sad to say, they've completely let go the treasure of the Dhamma. That is the point, you know. Huh? You need to, you know, uh, earn a living, you need to buy houses, you know, go ahead and do all those things, right? Full base. La. But have we spent some time in the greatest treasure? which is the Dhamma, right? So uh, you have to reflect on that. So that is uh, slide number 11 already. Huh? So now we need to go to number 12. Uh, that is going to the 10 one already. Huh? The 10 anniversary already. Huh? Ah, this is the 10 one and slide number 12. Huh? The 10 device, a very memorable one because it's the 10th anniversary. And it's has a very beautiful theme and a beautiful song with very good lyrics. Now, this theme, sharing Dharma, spreading Metta, that is a very important thing. So, as I say, the, great, the greatest gift is the gift of Dharma. So, once we learn the Dharma, but we can't share, we don't learn the Dharma ourselves, isn't it? How are you going to teach your children? Huh? So, they follow the right path. If we ourselves don't do it, so to share the Dhamma is a very, very meritorious thing. So we also have to uh, learn the Dhamma la, and follow. La. Then the other aspect is, uh, you know, Metta Bawana. Uh, to spread the Metta to yourself, to the family members, to all people. La. And in the camps, they always have uh, this Metta Bawana. Uh, they have been taught, you know. I've also done presentation just to remind how they can practice the Metta bawana, the how, uh, how to do it, or the why you must do it, what is metta, all this already put. But then how many people are really keen, you see? But that is a very fantastic treasure. So we have to check ourselves, you see, right? Are we promoting the Dharma? Or are we only pro pro promoting the, the products that we are doing in direct sales? It's not to say that it's wrong, but eh? there's a way to earn properly, yeah. Uh? right way to earn or to sell things and so on. But what I'm saying is uh, they forget the other important thing, the promoting the Dhamma. And then uh, how many are still practicing Metta Bawana to radiate loving kindness to others? So that one we have to ask ourselves. People usually say, oh, we are very, very busy. Yeah, everybody has the same 24 hours. It's a matter of priorities, isn't it? And how you manage your time. So all these are just what we call... Uh, the Mara, uh, luring you uh, to give the excuses. No? So we still need to spend some time, isn't it? I see some uh, followers of uh, Christianity or proper other proper religions, so mainstream religions, uh, they are doing well, actually. It's not only uh, uh, Buddhists uh, that can uh, you know, practice a religion well. You have good Christians, good Muslims, good Hindus also. So, but we are addressing it to the, we are addressing the Buddhists, uh, the Buddhists themselves, you see. Uh, so are they practicing well? You see? Ah, so are you relating metta? So all this we have to ask ourselves very, very clearly. Now you can see the pictures. La. Now let us go on to the next one, which is slide number 13 now. And this is on the 11 Dhamma you can already. Ah, but this is also a very memorable theme. Trouble times, Dharma times, especially today when we have the you know terrible COVID nineteen, uh, the pandemic. Uh, you find people you know having problems of the mind, anxious, uh, not at ease in the mind, and then so much of dukkha coming from loss of jobs and then uh, deaths among uh, loved ones and so on. Uh, loss of dukkha, not only in the I mean, among the I mean in the pandemic, uh, you have many other aspects, social problems, crime, uh, and then uh, wow, natural disasters, all those, isn't it? 
So this team becomes very, very meaningful. We are in troubled times. So what is the certain things happening outside? You can't help it in a way. You can't go and change it. Uh, like Harry Potter with a magic wand. I don't want all this. Everything comes. We can't. But we can change our minds, our response, how we can be more peaceful in the midst of all this dukkha. Right? And that is a fantastic thing, isn't it? So the side this team becomes very, very meaningful as we move with the times uh, and becoming uh, <laughs> times are becoming more challenging, like I can see. Uh, uh. So I think you know trouble times, uh, you can uh, see uh, the dukkha, and then you have to realize the importance of learning, reflecting, and practicing the Dhamma that will help you see. I know I have a few cases that contact me. They say, yeah, but oh, luckily uh, I have the Dhamma, so it helps me to cope. Uh, that is a wonderful thing to hear, that you're on the right Dhamma learning, then it's helping you to cope. The Dukkha will be there, but your mind can be better. So now we have to reflect. Are we learning and practicing the Dhamma? You can't expect the mind to grow if you don't learn and practice the Dhamma. And then uh, you should, if you, as you go along, uh, then you can check. Are our minds wiser to face challenging times? And if you have been practicing well, then of course there will be improvement. Your mind gets better and better to face these challenging times of growing Dukkha. Uh, so these are the reflections that you have to do. And you can see all those uh, uh, pictures. Uh, uh, this one also we see to the Uluma Kana Chacha, right? And then of course they do the talent night, you know, with a very beautiful Dharma message to convey. All these things are uh, during the camp. Uh, people are very happy, so reluctant to leave at the end of the camp. Now the interesting question is, how many are still at the Dharma? Very small percentage. But there are. There are people, right? uh, some of the camp leaders right, have done very well and continue, they are moving to life. And some, you know, DYC participants have become also the committee members holding important positions. And that is something very meritorious, sadhu to these people. A very, very small percentage, I would say, uh, of the... I don't know how many already have gone through the Dhamma new camps already. Probably less than 5% of these uh, real diamonds, uh, precious stones, uh, this sort of uh, really going to light on. Uh, uh. Now let us go on to the next one, which is uh, just now, uh, it was 11. Now, uh, now it's number 12, uh, uh, slide number 14. Uh, and number, uh, this was the probably the only camp where we had it in Camera Highlands uh, outdoor. So the number of participants was smaller, uh, right? It was a memorable one because a lot of outdoor activities, activities in nature and so on, with the team seeking nature's peace and bliss. Uh, to emphasize to the participants the importance of having the peaceful mind are uh, in nature. Today, uh, too many get caught up in the busyness of urban living, you know, traffic jams, uh, uh, great shopping complexes, uh, uh, cinemas, all those things, uh, they have not really become more peaceful. So they need to go back to the nature. The Buddha's time was like that, you know, going back to the nature. So now we have, uh, like for example, now how many parents will bring their children uh, to you know, natural sports and all those things, all right? Uh, that's a very good thing. How are we appreciating nature more and more? On the contrary, you find people are destroying the fauna and flora, uh, destroying nature. You know, that's why you have uh, so many natural catastrophes uh, due to man's stupid doing, uh, all right? Exploiting the land, uh, deforestation, uh, uh, burning, uh, open burning in the forest. Uh, all sorts of foolish actions cause uh, terrible disasters. Uh, landslides, uh, floods, uh, and maybe some... Uh, um, other terrible things uh, like bushfires and so on. I think you know all those things. Uh. That is, you are not respecting and really taking care of nature. So we have to ask ourselves and teach the children. Uh, that is important thing, to teach the children about this. And then the other aspect, of course, uh, to be able to meditate regularly. Very important. And if you can meditate in the forest, there is so much the better also. Uh, you know, not every time, but once in a while, uh, you can uh, go there. Uh, so that is this 12 Dhamma Yukam, slide number 14. 
So now let us go on to slide number 15. Ah, that is slide number 15, which is on the 13th Dharma you camp. And in the 13th Dharma you camp already, you can see it was held in the Dhamma Chaka building already. Huh? A very, very big hall with a good stage where you could do very memorable talent nights. Huh? Now, the team for this camp, 2005, was doing good seeking truth. Again, very important Dhamma in the team. To do good will be the morality part. Huh? Right? And then also Dana. Huh? And then seeking truth, huh? ah, that means... Huh? to really cultivate uh, and then to be able to realize the Dharma, to see things as they really are. You see, great people, uh, spiritual people, and then people uh, you find uh, they become great religious leaders, proper ones, uh, not the cows. Uh, uh, they start off by seeking the truth. Right? As so many monks have uh, told us, uh, they, uh, some would go from one religion to another. Finally, they encounter the Dharma. And that is the truth of the Dharma. And then once they come into contact already, they practice this, and then they realize it. So we have to ask ourselves these questions based on the theme. How much Dana have we been doing? So doing good, of course, very important thing is the practice of charity, service to others, giving generously. That one is very important. I've done lots of posts on Dana. But the other thing is, are we practicing meditation to purify the mind? You want to seek the truth. It's very important that you have to go into the mind, you see. People think, oh, you go outside uh, and search and search. Uh, where is the truth? Uh? Uh, where is heaven? Uh? Where is hell? Uh? It's not in the outside. It's all within your mind. So we need to develop the mind. And one important practice, apart from listening and learning and reflecting on Dhamma, and the other important thing is the meditation. So this is also a very meaningful team of doing good, seeking truth. So now let us go on to slide number 16 now. Now number 16, that is slide number 16. Ah, this is one very memorable year with a very beautiful team song. Many of the early Theme songs were composed by one of our retired teachers, Brother T. Huh? So he composed beautiful songs and with uh, good lyrics also. So all those uh, you can check up and then reflect on the lyrics. And you will be moving to greater and greater light. Uh, so this one, Goodbye Samsara, Hello Nibbana. Uh, uh, samsara, you know, the rounds of suffering rebirths uh, in Samsara. Uh, Cyclic existence, uh, uh, um, uh, life, and then death, reborn, and goes on. And uh, if you reborn into human realm or in the heavens, okay, uh, what happens you get reborn? Uh, as Ajahn Dhamma would say, mostly you get reborn into the hungry ghost, not enough good needs. So we have to take steps to say goodbye to samsara. When it's goodbye to samsara, it means you become enlightened. That's the final goal. Uh. That means you are going to go to Nibbana. That is the ideal. That is the ideal. But then even you cannot reach one shot. But then if you move towards direction, towards that direction, then you can read very fantastic things. You might reach first stage of sainthood already. No more rebirth into the woeful realms. So that is really fantastic. So we have to ask ourselves reflections like this. Are we walking the path to end dukkha or suffering? Have we taken steps of doing the sila samadhi panya? Morality, concentration, and wisdom, basically the noble evil path. Huh? So are we striving hard, diligently on this path with the final goal of enlightenment? But then even if you don't get it, one shot or in the near uh, future, but if you are making progress, uh, you are on the way and you reach certain stage that is also very good already, isn't it? Uh, so, if you listen to the song, you will find beautiful lyrics about this, about how to say goodbye to samsara and then hello Nibbana and why it's so important. So, that is this very memorable, the 14 Dhamma Youth Camp 
And that is slide number 16. So now let us go on to number 17. Ah, so now we are on slide 17. It's the 15 Dhamma Youth Camp 2007. Long time ago, so uh, the years just passed. Uh. And this one also a very beautiful theme on Ehi Pasiko, life's lessons to know. Life lessons actually the most important with the Dhamma. Uh, you can see this why sometimes I say life lessons because people of other religions also are viewing. Uh. So life lessons are because Dhamma is everywhere, isn't it? The Dhamma is uh, the way things are, the ultimate truth. Right, the laws of nature to help you to uh, live your life more peacefully, more happily, uh, more calmly. All those good things uh, that will be Dhamma, our life lessons. Ehi Pasiko means come and see. So you can introduce your friends and they can really uh, be introduced to these important life lessons. Uh. So when we come and see, all right, then we find out for ourselves uh, what are the things that really matter in life. What in the end counts, not your worldly things, uh, right? But the things that really matter finally, uh, where you carry with you in your mind from life to life. Do you know what these things are? And then do you investigate uh, following the Sutta, Kalama Sutta, the Charter of Free Inquiry? Inquiry, uh, free inquiry to investigate for yourself. And then after that, your confidence builds up and you really walk the path ardently with passion and diligence. Uh, so if you listen to the song, right, you will get a lot of important Dharma messages. Uh. Uh, the lyrics all show and everything. As I so say just now, you can click on the links uh, uh, as shown now. Uh. So that is the 15 Dhamma you can on slide number 17. So now we go on to slide number 18. Ah, slide number 18. Now we are at the 16 Dhamma you can slide number 18, 2008, with the theme Noble Thoughts, Righteous Ways. Now the noble thoughts, uh, I will tie it up with the right thought. And right thought uh, comes through also the right view. Uh. So it's back, back to the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh. To have the right thoughts or right, uh, when you call it, uh, intention and so on. Uh, you must have the right view. So these two very important uh, in the Noble Eightfold Path. All are important. But then in order, uh, you can say, as Sachan Dhammamudu emphasizes, it starts off with right view. And then when you have the right view, uh, of things, uh, right understanding, uh, then it will lead you to have the right thoughts. Right thoughts uh, are like, for example, thoughts of metta, goodwill, uh, thoughts of uh, non-attachment, uh, uh, not uh, caught up in the sensual world, thoughts of non-cruelty. Uh, all these are good thoughts. Uh. Opposite, you know, uh, wrong thought. Uh, uh, greed, uh, anger, uh, hatred, and so on. Uh, right? So that means we still have to watch the mind. And then with your right understanding, right thought, uh, then you will practice well your sila, your morality, isn't it? Uh, so that is the thing you have to reflect and practice. Of course, the pictures all show uh, things uh, uh, pertaining to that camp. Uh, I can just have so many of the pictures uh, so I have to do the selection. Only, uh, uh. So now let us go on to slide number 19 now. Uh, now, number 19 uh, is on the 17th Dhamma you can. We have time to do only 18, uh, already coming to near uh, one hour already. 17 DYC 2009, Open Heart, Radiant Mind. Now, Open Heart pertains to the compassion, love aspect of your heart, right? To open up and then develop the kindness, the love, right? In your practice. But not only this one we are concerned with. At the same time, we must relate the mind, uh, sorry, to develop the mind so that the mind becomes brighter, wiser, more calm, more concentrated and focused on the things. So these are the two things again that uh, you find uh, running through many camps. Uh, 
right, of your compassion, metta, and so on. And then also to develop the mind to have wisdom. So we have to check and ask ourselves, are we growing in loving kindness and compassion? Are we seeing things as they truly are when you have the wisdom? And when you have the wisdom and you can see things very, very clearly as they really are, not what you have been taught to believe or what superstitions that you have, then your life becomes more peaceful. So these are the reflections. Actually, this one is suitable for all practicing Buddhism because all the important Dharma reflections we have to do with it. Even though it's titled Dharma you Camps, but you know, all can actually watch this very important presentation. Now you have the Dharma discussion uh, picture, one of them I pick. Uh, so uh, small groups, they have these Dharma discussions. But the sad thing is, uh, <laughs> mostly uh, we'll completely forget already. Now let us go on to slide number 20 now. Uh, that is the last one for the DYC. Uh, actually now it has crossed 20, 25 already now. Uh, that is slide number 20, the 18 Dharma Youth Camp. And this was one of the, also the few years, as I told you, I wrote uh, the monkey mind one. Uh. And then this one also that year, you know, people were busy, so I had no choice but to write. I'm really not very good in song lyrics. Uh. But anyway, I did write this theme on a part to peace and bliss and compose the songs. You can, uh, but I, I don't compose the music. I just wrote the lyrics and then the explanation for the theme. Uh. Now, this one, very important, is it? Again, we go back to the very important thing. Uh, what is the most important part? The best of parts uh, is the Noble Eightfold Part. And this is the one that will lead us to true peace and bliss. True happiness, peace, right? Not what people now consider, oh, I will have happiness. You have uh, uh, Alfa Ferrari, I mean, uh, Alfa Romeo, uh, Ferrari, uh, Jaguar. Uh, I will be very, very peaceful if I can always take holidays in the big cities. Uh. All these uh, are not the true peace and bliss. True peace and true bliss uh, will be in the internal mind. And once you have attained maybe to a certain level, uh, all the things of the world, uh, uh, the mundane happiness and the bliss and everything uh, will be very, very small compared to the true peace and bliss that is found inside the mind. So do you know what this true peace and bliss? And are you on a practice uh, that slowly you will have a realization that you can, of course, you cannot get one shot uh, perfectly, uh, but you can have a glimpse really, oh, there is such a state like this. And you can see uh, in some of the cultivated monks, we have met many. Uh, wow, you see the face are so radiant. Uh, ah, so good. So you must follow the noble evil part. Then you will be able to conquer the dukkha of the mind. The disease, uh, not disease. Uh, disease means uh, a mind that is not you know, at peace. No? Always uneasy, uh, very, very uh, miserable, trouble. All those things are uh, not at ease, not peaceful, or truly happy and peace and uh, calm. Uh, uh, so what to do? You have to follow a path patiently, ardently, diligently. Right? persistently, uh, then you slowly will begin to see. Uh, so that is this theme, a part to peace and bliss. And you can learn more about the Dhamma in the lyrics of the song. If you just click on in the, I think the second slide on the PowerPoint. So now let us come to the end already. Uh, and that is on the last slide. Uh, I just want to show the uh, the three years, uh, three of the years of the DYC, uh, previous uh, participants. Uh, I think this time uh, all held in the Dhamma Chaka building. So we have to maybe reflect on this, very important. The greatest of all gifts is the Buddha Dhamma. Dhamma practice will kill the evil of Mara. Mara is just not the physical devil, no. Is actually the personification of evil, all those evil forces uh, that cause you dukkha and then get uh, woeful rebirths, one, uh, like greed, hatred, delusion. So it's the Dhamma practice uh, that will eradicate. Uh, uh, it's not really taking a knife to kill, uh, right? That will eradicate or get rid of all the mental poisons, the terrible evil of Mara. Uh, the evil forces, I can say. Uh, 
uh, evil forces. So it is only through the proper Dharma practice that will end all suffering or dukkha and you reach Nibbana. So that is this very important final message in this presentation. Realize that the greatest gift and the greatest thing that will really be the most meaningful and following you from life to life, your true treasure really, your true wealth is the Buddha Dharma. And then what is very important uh, to practice the Dharma well so that you slowly lessen and uh, you slowly get rid of all the mental defilements or the poisons, right? Uh, so the second part. Then the third part is uh, we know that if we want to end all suffering, we must walk the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh. So these are the three very important points that uh, you need to contemplate on very, very carefully. Uh, so, this presentation is to me uh, very important. I've done similar ones uh, previous years, like, you know, uh, the DYC, just a memory, but I've not given a talk on this. This is the first time uh, uh, the PowerPoint presentations have been done. So, I hope uh, those who are watching uh, uh, or those who follow this will be able to share uh, with their friends, previous Dharma participants, and for the adults, you can share with other fellow members. So then you will help to spread the Dhamma, right? And that is a very meritorious thing to do, uh, to help to share the Dhamma. So that many people will benefit and Dukkha can be lessened among many, many people. So that is a fantastic thing to do, isn't it? Now, people usually say they are very busy. Uh, as I say, it's a matter of priority, but do spend some time and you will never regret it. You know? All wise ones will advise that you know? because that is the thing that really matters in the end. Uh, the intangible things of the mind. So I have spoken at length this time, I think one of the longest presentations, more than one hour. And before we say sadhu three times, I would like to thank all the brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, all the youth members present once and also ex-youth members and all the Dhamma participants, right? Recent ones and some long, long ago one, right? With, dating back into 1993 one. Right? And then uncles, aunties and all practicing Buddhists who happen to watch this do help to share this around. So, I say sadhu to all of these people uh, and uh, put in good effort, take their time and then also spend energy and then uh, being mindful to watch this presentation. Uh. So I say sadhu and thank you. And now to conclude, we will say sadhu three times. So you can put the palms together and then say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, may all be well, happy, and peaceful. And may you continue to walk the Dharma way uh, and do not let go of the Dharma. Take care.